And could you go over some of your findings on that? One type of random number generator experiment that's been conducted many, many times, hundreds of times, over the past four decades or so, has been a random generator that only produces sequences of random bits, zeros and ones, like, like flipping coins. And you would simply ask somebody to press a button, it would produce 200 bits, and you would ask them to say, well, try to make it produce more one bits than zero bits, that somehow intention is correlated with the operation, with the output of these random number generators, such that if you wish for more ones, somehow the generators produce more ones. Many others around the world have taken random number generators within groups that are doing coherent things, and sure enough, the random number generators become coherent. So the matter becomes ordered. And then they started thinking, well, what would happen if we're not dealing with groups of a couple dozen, but with hundreds of millions of people, all of whom had their attention focused suddenly on something. So this generated the notion of the Global Consciousness Project, which was headed by Roger Nelson at Princeton. And the idea is to take random number generators, locate them around the world, run them 24 hours a day, and every five minutes send all the data up to a single web server at Princeton. So we have a continuous record, and we've had it now for eight years, a continuous record of randomness from around the world. We have spontaneous events like 9-11 that weren't planned. But we're able to look at all of them now in terms of what happened to this randomness, this physical measure of randomness around the world, when a lot of minds suddenly became focused on something. We have hundreds of events now, both planned and unplanned. And it is very clear that overall, the randomness is not as random as it ought to be, by, by theory, when these events are occurring, when 9-11 occurred. We analyzed it very closely to see what was happening. There were 37 random generators running that day. If you go into the data and you look at it over the course of the day, 9-11, you find a very unusual statistical structure in the data. It, it's as though if you think about the results of this experiment like a bell shape, we're, we're constantly cre recreating a bell-shaped curve. That's what the statistics look like. And we're interested in how does the bell ring? On 9-11, the bell rang extremely loud. It swung hard in one direction, and it swung hard in the other direction, basically. And then we thought, well, that's, that's unusual. So we compared it to other days. We started comparing it to more and more days around 9-11, and it turns out that 9-11, within the year 2001, was the loudest ringing of the bell. Well, it was probably also the, the, the most focused day of attention for 2001 and maybe since then. The other thing that was interesting is that the bell started to swing before 8.30 in the morning, Eastern Time. It began to swing noticeably before the events unfolded, which suggested something like a premonition. There was something beginning to build statistically that then basically exploded at the, when, when the events unraveled, but uh, something was, was a premonition 